Gardening is a lifelong learning process, and there are always new things to discover, learn, and improve on. With 2022 behind us and the excitement building for the 2023 growing season, I thought it would be a good exercise to share five of the top lessons I learned from the garden last year. Getting high in the garden is the best. Even with the large plot I have to work with, it's still worthwhile to make the most of my space. Growing more plants vertically is a great way to achieve this. At the beginning of the season, I took on a project to build a large trellis for my squash. Even with the price of lumber and my lackluster handyman skills, I feel like it was a great investment into my garden. I was able to grow around eight butternut squash plants in a space that could otherwise have easily been filled by one sprawling one. I also think that it looks nice and it creates an interesting aesthetic to the space. Bonus points for the improved airflow around them for healthier plants overall. Compost is king. I got serious about building up my compost pile this year and making it more of a priority. Buying in bags just isn't practical or cost effective on my scale. Even though the benefits of good compost are very well known, the point still wasn't driven home to me until I got serious about making my own. I was able to source local free supplies of manure and leaf mold. These really helped to build up a larger productive pile and supplement the scraps I was pulling out from my garden anyways. The results I saw on the plants that it was applied to make this a no-brainer. I will continue working on and improving my heap, and I'll likely add additional composting space for the coming growing year. Pest issues can get overwhelming very quickly. This year, I was treated to one of the worst caterpillar infestations I've ever experienced. The plot I took over sits near an older orchard space and the member who's maintained it since the mid-1970s said they had never seen anything so bad in their entire time here. Before they were able to do too much, their trees got completely defoliated by the caterpillars. And once they were done there, they made a mass migration towards my plot. It's hard to convey the size of the problem, but I was spending hours per day over many weeks solely killing caterpillars in their thousands and not even putting a dent in their numbers. During this frustrating period, I was not able to spend very much time attending to other needs in my garden other than the bare minimum of watering. Luckily, with a lot of persistence, effort, and a multi-pronged plan of attack, I was able to get on top of them enough to save most of my crops. After cutting down the nests, I blasted the remaining caterpillars off the vegetation with a hose. I was amazed at how fast they would find their way back to the base of the tree and attempt to climb back up. I did block their ascent though with a tangle foot band and that area made for a good highly concentrated point to kill them in high amounts. For the remaining foliage, which wasn't so easily blocked off, I used BTK. Thankfully, it's one of the few pesticides available to organic growing. With all of this still fresh in mind for 2023, I will be conducting a lot of these measures preemptively to hopefully avoid any other plagues playing out this year. Growing them isn't a challenge, storing them is. Most of the year, gardening is a relaxing hobby and meditative practice for me. However, come August and early September, it turns into a second full-time job for a while. With tomatoes, cucumbers, and zucchini, just to name a few, coming in faster than we can eat them in that particular moment. It's certainly a good problem to have, and I've been working on how to most efficiently store that bounty so we can enjoy it over a longer time frame. Chopping, freezing, canning, the processing time to keep them longer adds up quickly. Furthermore, most of this requires me to spend lengthy sessions indoors in the kitchen at a time that 
I'd much rather be outside enjoying our nice weather. I've started experimenting with home canning as our apartment can't hold a larger freezer or any sort of root cellar. Though I was largely successful with this, I did lose a number of jars of the delicious pear sauce I made to mold. It was a bit of a harsh reminder to really be careful with the cleanliness and not to cut any corners in the canning process. Be careful not to bite off more than you can chew. Right around the time I was starting to get quite busy with my main harvest, I responded to a friend's post about having some extra seeds to give out that were otherwise destined for the landfill. I didn't really pay attention to the amount or scale being given away before I agreed to take them all to sort and give out to the community. I felt like a kid on Christmas getting to pick from my share of a ton of varieties However, I also realized if I was to have any hope of handing them out to the greater public, there would be some basic amount of sorting required. Even with the help of some kind volunteers, we still spent many hours sorting them. It felt good to rescue something from the landfill, especially something I knew so many people in my community would highly value. However, in hindsight, it was just too big of a project at already too busy of a time. Luckily, going forward, I'll have many new varieties that I get to try out, and I'm very excited for that. Apart from the delicious food, a favorite part of gardening for me is the lessons you learn along the way. 2022 taught me a lot that will help me maximize the garden's potential for the next year. By keeping these points in mind and learning from each other, we can all enjoy a successful and sustainable garden. Until next time, happy gardening.